everybody, it's Miss Sandy from Calvert Library and welcome to Bedtime Stories. So this evening I would like to share an old favorite with you. This one is about that kind of animal right there. What, what do you see there? Did you say squirrel? You're absolutely right. But this is a special squirrel. His name is Macabre and he lives in a place called New York City. And he has some very special skills. Let's see if we can find out more about our friend here. So we're going to read Macabre, written by John Lithgow and illustrated by C.F. Payton. We'd like to say a special thank you to the publisher, Simon & Schuster, for allowing us to share this story with you today. One Sunday in springtime, Macabre arose from his Central Park carousel nest. He straightened his whiskers and polished his nose and set off for the place he loved best. He scampered past pigeons and poodles and geese, past boathouse and bandshell and zoo, past joggers and skaters and mounted police to a palace on Fifth Avenue. For inside was a splendid collection of arts, a sight for a squirrel to treasure, a feast every week for his eyes and his heart, which Macabre could savor at leisure. Through the windows, he gazed at Van Dyke and Van Gogh, appraise every Rembrandt and Titian. He would scrutinize Rubens, peruse each Rousseau, inspect each Lautrec and Cassatt and Nero. He would find a new favorite each time he would go, and nobody charged him admission. But a stranger appeared this particular day as Macabre peered down through a skylight. She stood at an easel beneath a Monet that depicted a haystack at twilight. Macabre observed her for hours on end as she copied each texture and shade. He noted the stroke of each brush she'd extend, the rare concentration and care she'd expend. She'd become his unwitting and unknowing friend by the time the day started to fade. So he hid in a box where her paints were all stowed while she bicycled home unawares. Then he sneaked himself into her modest abode as she hauled her equipment upstairs. From the box after midnight, the stowaway crept, stretched his limbs and adjusting his eyes. And while his beguiler contentedly slept, he rifled through all her supplies. Macabre's dull life with its tedious toils all at once seemed a hundred times duller as he straddled a pallet and squeezed out some oils and discovered the wonders of color. He daubed at a canvas with cadmium green, employing his tail as a brush. Then magenta, vermilion, and ultramarine, alizarin and crimson, and bright tangerine. Such a radiant rainbow he never had seen, so splashy and lavish and lush. By morning, Macabre was finally done, and so proud that he practically fainted. He'd been looking at paintings from day number one, but never a painting he'd painted. As sunlight poured in, he was ready to go, leaving everything just as he found it. Through the transom, he scrambled, his canvas in tow, rolled up with a shoelace tied round it. A truck trundled by as Macabre alit on a side, it said Park Sanitation. He bounded aboard it, ignoring the grit, and completed his peregrination. He returned 30 times by the following fall, and the paintings poured forth like a geyser. He fastened them all to his living room wall, and the woman was never the wiser. So if some July you should chance to pass by a Viridian Central Park Dale, look around for a squirrel with a gleam in his eye and some paint on the tip of his tail. And if you should visit the old carousel, look up at its uppermost part. Inside, although nobody ever could tell, a talented squirrel continues to dwell. If you try, you can picture it clear as a bell. Macabre's Museum of Art. 
Kathy, and well, I hope that you enjoyed our story, and I hope that you're getting a chance to make some art of your own these days. Thanks so much for joining us. Stay tuned to Calvert Library social media platforms for lots more story time snippets. Thanks so much. Night night.